I will now talk about a very important concept or subject in the discrete math that uh, is known as the growth of functions. And this is a, a topic that is about looking at the behavior of a function rather than its value. Okay, so we are interested in contrasting or comparing two functions, but not while asking what's the value or which one of them is larger at every, in the, in, at every value of the function, but looking at their behavior, how do they grow? And in our context, this is mainly come. This mainly comes in the when we are analyzing the running time or the memory consumption of algorithms. So when we have an algorithm, we are interested in knowing how long does this algorithm take on an input of a certain size. Okay, so I have suppose I have an an algorithm that runs on an array of 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 n elements. How long does that algorithm take as a function of n, and how does that that running time grow as a function of n itself? So if I double the size of the array, what happens to the running time of the algorithm? If I triple the size, if I take the size of the array squared, what happens to the running time? So this is why in in this in this uh, set of videos here we will be talking about the order of growth. Okay, not not the, the the exact number of or the exact value of the function at for a certain for a certain uh, parameter but how does it grow as its parameter grows okay so i want to look at function f of x i want to look at function f of x and i say how does f of x grow as x itself grows okay so as x goes from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 how is f of x growing now, as I said, we in our context, we will be mainly focusing on or interested in this because of analyzing running time or memory consumption of algorithms. But it's important to keep in mind that the growth of functions is not relevant only to analysis of algorithms. You can see the notations or concepts we are going to cover now. You're going to see them in other areas of mathematics or sometimes when we are talking about functions that have nothing to do with running times. And we, wanna, we don't want to get to the exact value of the function, but we want to try to bound it and say this function looks like a quadratic function without having to write exactly that, you know, ax squared plus bx plus c, because we might not know what a or b or c is, but we will know that this seems to be like a quadratic function. And it's very important here to, to, to again, understand this concept that I'm interested in the growth of, of the number of steps in this, in my case, or the growth of the function as the input size increases. And let me illustrate this with a simple example. Suppose we have, suppose we have two algorithms, two students wrote two algorithms, and we have algorithm one, or algorithm A, and we have algorithm B, okay, by two students. The first, and both of them, suppose they work on arrays of size n, okay? So these are algorithms that take as input an array of size n. And the running time of algorithm A is f of n is, let's say, it's 2n plus 80. The running time of algorithm B of the other student, it is, let's say, n squared, okay? So one student came up with an algorithm that takes 2n plus 80 steps, on an, on an input of size n, uh, or an array of size n, and the second algorithm is takes n squared on an array of size n. They were both supposedly solve the same problem. So now the question is that which one of these algorithms do we prefer? Okay, both of them are correct, but they take different running times. Now, if you look at these two functions here, and you start looking at, okay, what happens if the array is of size one? If I look at it, If I look at it for, for n equal 1, f of 1, it is 2 plus 1, 2, so it's 82. g of 1, this is f of 1, right? g of 1, it's 1. So g of 1 is definitely smaller than f of 1. If I look at n equal 2, then f of 2, it is 84, and g of 2 is 4. So algorithm B is better than algorithm A in terms of running time so far. And I can keep evaluating this, but notice what will happen here. At some point, in particular, if I look at n equal 9, we still have, for f of 9, we will have 98 here, and g of 9 
it's going to be 81. Still, G algorithm B is better than algorithm A. But at some point here, we are going to get to an inflection point in some sense. What is F of 10? F of 10 is going to be 100. G of 10 is 100. So we, we were, you know, as the, the input size was growing from 1 to 10, G, algorithm B was better because G was smaller function. Then all of a sudden at n equal 10, they both have the same value. And from that point on, when you look at n equal 11, we have f of 11 equals 102. And g of 11 is going to be 121, right? So now at this point, g, if you look at this point here, from this point on, sorry, if you look at it from this point on here, for every n, for every n greater than or equal to 10, we have g of n definitely greater than or equal to f of n. So this is a case where algorithm A was better than algorithm B for very, uh, sorry, algorithm B was better than algorithm A for very small inputs, inputs of size one, two, three, all the way to nine. But once the input is of size 10 or larger, of course, algorithm B starts taking much longer time than algorithm A. And this is really the crucial issue here of why we are interested in the growth of functions when we talk about running time. Because yes, for smaller values of n, algorithm A is better, but we really don't care about that. We care about when, when the algorithm, when the input size starts growing, which one of them gets worse. And in this case, the n squared is worse than, or in, in, in other words, it becomes much larger than 2n plus 80. So this is really the concept that we are interested in here. I would like to ignore the fact that for n smaller than 10, the f was greater than g. I want to ignore this set of values here that in between 1 and 10, because usually our algorithms we are interested in work on larger inputs. Okay, so here is, here is a nice figure that illustrates some common functions that we might encounter as in running time of algorithms. If you look at this one, what I mean by one, it is f of n equals one, f of n is log n, and so on. So if you look at them, if you have an algorithm whose running time is constant, f of n equal one, that's the fastest algorithm of all these algorithms. If you have an algorithm whose running time is log n, takes log n, f of n is log n. Log n is much better than n and n log n and so on. So if you look at them here, we have the one smaller than or equal to log n, log n smaller than or equal to n and so on. But look, look at it here. You know, if you look at this point, for example, n factorial, n factorial is better than n squared for n smaller than, than, uh, than four. But really, I mean, we, we don't want to take, we don't want to take an algorithm that takes n factorial when you have an algorithm that takes n squared. We don't care about the values one, two, three, four, and so on. We care about it as, as n becomes larger, then the gap between n squared and n, n factorial becomes so huge that there is no even contest here between which algorithm we choose. Okay. So, Basically, what we want to do is that we really don't want to distinguish between functions that are related by multiplicative constants. So what do I mean by multiplicative, multiplicative constants? I mean that if you have f of n equals n and g of n equals 5, 5n, five I don't want to say that these are different. Okay, this, Yes, as, as in terms of actual values, they are different, but in terms of order of growth, they grow in the same they grow in the same order why because they are both linear right so if this is n here f of n would be this function f of n here what would be g of n it would be slightly faster here this is g of n but if you look at them if you look at g of n divided by 5 of n by f of n it is 5 right so g of n is greater than greater than f of n by a constant. And we want to say that these two grow at the same order. They are both linear functions. We don't want to distinguish between two linear functions. n, 5n, 17n plus million, 
200,000 n plus 5 and n for us they are the same what we say they are the same asymptotically they have the same order of growth and this is what we would like to do when we talk about the order of growth okay the last word i want to say in this video here is that for a very important reason i will assume that in in all videos except for the very last one i will assume that every function f is asymptotically non-negative what does that mean there exists a constant k such that f of x is greater than or equal to zero for x greater than or equal to k so if i have a function like this something like this this is a function that's asymptotically non-negative because again this is assume that it is increasing here because if I take this as k for x greater than or equal to k, the function becomes positive. Yes, it was negative in all this in, in this domain, but that's fine with me. I'm interested in functions that from a certain value k and all the way to infinity, this function becomes positive. Okay? Why are we interested in this? Because as I said, in our context, uh, these, these functions and this type of analysis are going to appear when we look at the, the running time of algorithms and or the memory consumption of algorithms and these are never negative no algorithm takes minus five steps it makes no sense to talk about negative functions but again the notation of the notations that we are going to see and the, the order of growth discussion applies to functions that are negative as well i will say a couple of words about that in the very last video in this set of videos here